What's up YouTube? I hope you're all excited because we're finally back at it again with the Subaru Swap Super Beetle. Um, I know a lot of you started watching this channel because of the content around this and unfortunately with some issues we had with our daily driver and also me getting a little excited about a motorcycle I found kind of has delayed us on working on this project. But good news, we are finally back on it. So today, um, I should say, in this video, we're gonna have a lot of stuff going on. The primary focus is gonna be getting our cooling system set up on this bad girl. Uh, but in the process, we're gonna have to remove the intake manifold because I'm actually gonna be swapping around our coolant crossover, uh, which is uh, part of the Subaru cooling system. So we're gonna actually be taking the engine apart just a little bit, just taking the intake manifold off. We'll kind of plug up any vacuum leaks we have in there still existing. Uh, we'll get the cooling system together, which includes our expansion tanks and riding the lines from the motor all the way up to the radiator in the front. So here you see the intake manifold's taken off, and it really wasn't too bad. So the whole reason we had to do that was we wanted to get over, uh, you know, in contact with this coolant crossover. And so usually how this would work is you have the radiator right here, and you would have the hot coolant coming from the motor to the radiator, through it, and then down here is our, you know, our water pump or our inlet. So the radiator hose would come out in here and it would circ circulate through the motor. And what we have here would be if you had a heater core. Basically this line would feed to your heater core because you imagine this would go to your firewall and to your driver's seat basically. <clears throat> so, and that's my what I believe from looking at this. So what I'm gonna do, and what's kind of common with some of these uh, Volkswagen Subaru swaps is we're actually gonna take this out and we're gonna 180 it so that this will now be pointing up towards the engine, uh, sorry, up towards the radiator that we have mounted in the front. And what I'll do is I'll actually shorten this and I'll use it to angle it somewhere up here to use as my expansion tank, which will also then feed into the turbo. And then the other side of it will come down and it will feed into the other side of the water pump. So it'll somewhat mimic um, the factory setup in a way, because that would, I believe these are one of these is for the, um, I want to say one of these, these are like the bypasses. So one of them comes from usually, I think it's like the factory oil cooler or oil warmer. And I think the other might actually be for the other side of the heater core. But so we'll plug one and we'll use the other as our return from our expansion tank um, and from our turbo. And then so, so that's what we'll do next. We'll 180 this, and then from there, we'll start figuring out how we're gonna root things. I have hard lines and I have soft lines, and I'm not 100% sure exactly how, what I'm gonna run to get up to the front of the motor. Um, but yeah, so we'll start by 180 in this and starting to figure out where everything lays. So we removed it and flipped it around, and you can kind of see what we're working with here. And it's already close to being a pretty good fit. Uh, we're getting a little interference here, which I think we can probably just take down with a flap disc. Shouldn't be a huge deal. And then we're also, in theory, we'd be getting interference here, but I think what we'll end up doing is cutting this somewhere back and aiming it straight up, and we'll have our expansion tank somewhere up here above it for the coolant. And then we'll plug this and we'll extend our wires for our coolant sensor. So this actually isn't too far. This is with the single overhead cam, so like the NA motor. And we can, I actually have the other version here too. So if I put that there, we can also try just for the sake of it, the one from the WRX motor, which I think is not gonna fit any better. 
but it's always good to try. Ah, it's actually much worse, so that's kind of expected. So we were planning on uh, reconstructing this line here to go to the expansion tank, but it looks like what we're also going to have to do, we're getting interference here and here, and also I'm not super comfortable with how close this is going to be to the starter. So I think what we're actually going to have to do, which I wasn't really looking forward to, is we're probably going to remove about an inch of section here which will bring it all back and then this will then clear this corner here and we'll also have our end in about an inch which will make it a little easier to avoid the starter um, and then I think what we'll do from there is we'll have like an S-shaped hose that'll bring it down and under the axle and then from here we'll do a 90 and we'll route them both up the center with the hard lines um, so the next thing I guess we'll kind of all do together is start reworking this coolant manifold and see what we end up with. All right, so we have this kind of chopped up and mocked up. You can see here this is just placed in. Uh, this isn't going to be a particularly easy thing to weld, but I am pretty happy with the location of it. So I think we're going to leave this cut for now just as it is. We're not going to tack it or anything because I'm waiting for a few pieces to come up that we'll actually use for connecting the uh, coolant lines with. Um, so while we wait for those things to come up, we should be here in the next day or so, we will actually move on to this part of the coolant manifold. Um, this would usually go to your heater core. We're not going to have one. So what I'm going to do is cut this shorter so that we can loop it out right around here. And we'll use a soft line like a rubber hose to come here. And right around here somewhere we'll put our expansion tank for coolant. <laughs> And here's the finished product. So you can see now what we'll do is we'll be able to connect the rubber hose here, small loop in it, and we'll be able to connect to our expansion tank or uh, coolant reservoir, or whatever you want to call it, which we don't have yet, but plan on it being somewhere right around here. That will be coming soon. Um, so now that we have this all set, it's already cooled and everything, and uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, I may paint it just for like almost rust prevention because it is just mild steel. Um, but happy, more or less happy with that. So then the next thing we'll do here is this is an old feed that used to go to the throttle body uh, to warm it in cold climates so that you'd be able to, you know, basically be able to run the car or even de-ice it if it's really cold. Um, de-ice the throttle body. Uh, so we don't need this. And it's also on the wrong side now because if you can imagine this has been 180, originally it was right here and it went up to the throttle body. We're never planning on using it. So the next thing we're gonna do is try some cast aluminum welding and we'll try to plug this up. Um, and from there, we're pretty much done everything else other than 
finishing up our return to the radiator. So if our parts don't come by the time we're done plugging this up, the next thing we will probably go to is plugging up our air assist uh, ports. So on this intake manifold and uh, this version of, I think it was either EJ253 or 251 that the heads in the intake manifold came off of, but you basically have a solenoid that injects air. Uh, I think either to help with like, I think it has to do with emissions or drivability. Um, we don't need it. So we'll figure out a way to plug here. Either, I, I think I might thread here and put like a, um, you know, just like a brass plug in and there's one on each side. So we need to do that. And we also need to plug an unused port here, which I think was originally for like the fuel pressure regulator, but we're not using that anymore because we have kind of a vacuum tee for everything here. So we also need to plug this as well. So that's kind of what we're gonna be doing here, just plugging up any uh, unused things for the radiator. Uh, I should say the cooling system as well as any unused vacuum ports because we definitely were having vacuum leaks during our like previous starts and runs granted they were for a short time but we want to make sure we don't have any vacuum leaks so that when next time we start this up we can actually leave it running for a long time bleed excuse me bleed the cooling system and break in the cams so like i said next thing is going to be plugging that hole on the coolant manifold So we were working on plugging these air assist, um, I guess ports you would call them, right here. And the same thing on this side. And I actually got a really good deal on a intake manifold from a, I think it's a 2016 STI. Um, so I'm considering pivoting. I can actually use the whole harness that I've already made and just update for the injectors. And that's kind of the biggest advantage of switching over um, right now is I will have way more options for injectors um, and these ones start with already like a 500 cc versus uh, or 560 versus what I have right now in the motors a 380 cc. The other advantage would be the throttle body. Um, it's electric thon electronic throttle body which is actually be really cool. Um, but the Megascore um, itself doesn't support this. You'd actually have to get a separate module that um, like some other company makes which I'm not super about so what i'll do is i'll grab an adapter plate that you can get offline and i'll still use my drive-by cable throttle um, with this manifold and all i'll have to do is splice in my harness uh for the new injectors and that really should be it so we're going to switch to that but in the meantime um actually some more stuff came in so you see here, I also got all my stuff from Summit. So these are 16 AN fittings and uh, weld bungs for my radiator and for my coolant manifold and for the water pump, or I should say the thermostat housing. Um, so because these are here and I still haven't really decided what I wanna do with the intake manifold and this is mostly supposed to be coolant work right now. We're gonna go to uh, welding these on. So I'm gonna start with the coolant manifold because once I get this on, I can really figure out how to finish that. And then from there, everything else should be pretty straightforward.
So here you get a rough idea of what we're doing with the thermostat housing. And we'll have a line go off here and probably wrap that with heat wrap. And then the other part that we have right here, we still gotta figure out exactly how we want it to go. So I think at this point, I'm actually gonna make our line so I can get an idea how it bends and kind of where it lands. So I have a good idea how exactly I wanna finish off this manifold. And then from there, we're done everything on the engine side. And we'll just, from that point, we will add our fittings to the radiator and our two, two expansion tanks. We'll have one, which I actually just received today. We'll have this expansion tank somewhere. I'm almost thinking I might mount it right here in the front. Um, but we get to mount this somewhere in the engine area and then we'll have another tank, um, a smaller one up by the front by the radiator. And that just kind of gives us two bleed points, two highest points so that uh, we can get any air bubbles out. So the next thing I'll do is I'll make a line real quick to figure out exactly what kind of bend angle we're looking at here. And then I can kind of finish our um, manifold and be done everything on the engine side. All right, so you can kind of see where we ended up. This should be exactly what we want to get the coolant return. And also down here, you can see kind of our coolant feed into the thermostat housing. And down here, we'll wrap it with some heat shrink, uh, sorry, some heat wrap just to be uh, safe. We have some stuff from uh, Thermotech, so <clears throat> should be good. So now the next thing we'll move on to will be our radiator up front. And we already had it originally mounted and it was very convoluted. This is one of our first projects we did on the Beetle just to kind of get a feel for where the radiator would end up. I'll put a link in uh, right up here so you guys can see it and kind of laugh at how um, complex and convoluted this ended up being. So what we're gonna do, because now is the right time, is we're actually gonna remount the radiator using the bracket here and the bracket here that we have from our previous video and we'll no longer use the bolts down here and down there that are a little harder to see. But, um, so what I'll do now is I'll set up the radiator real quick. This should be a pretty simple um, mounting setup. And then from there we'll work on putting our AN fittings on the inlet and outlet of the radiator and also work on our, we'll also have a small catch can up here, or sorry, a small reservoir up here. I'm gonna uh, change this out for a larger fitting and we'll put a reservoir somewhere in this area just to help us have another bleeding point at the front of the car. So a quick little trick, um, when you're making brackets and you kind of want them to be very similar or identical if possible is, so I have these two that I'm gonna use for on the lower part of the radiator um, for the pegs. So what I'll do is I'll tack them both together, drill the hole and basically uh, finish them like on the belt sander together. And then I'll just break the tacks at the end and I'll have two nearly identical brackets. So I'll show you that now.
So we were actually very lucky. Uh, I had satin black paint in the garage. Spray paint hadn't even been open, um, which is the exact color I wanted for this. So that's perfect. So we painted that up. I enlarged these holes where the pins for the radiator mount, and I bought a bag of bushings or grommets off of McMaster car. And if you guys haven't heard of McMaster car, um, I use this a lot in my professional career. Uh, it's really good for hardware, consumables, uh, really a lot of that random type stuff that you would need for prototyping and uh, building stuff. Uh, it's almost like staples for hardware, I guess you would consider it. But I'll put a link in the description. If you haven't heard of it, I definitely check it out because it has a lot of oddball things like this, bolts, weld nuts, uh, insulation tape, just a lot of different things that you could use in a car build. So now that we're here, we're going to let the, the paints dry. This is uh, the next morning, just so you guys know. Uh, I didn't want to hang out in here while the paint was drying and get too high. So we're going to place these grommets in, install the radiator in its permanent location, and then we'll just make two straps for the top of it to hold it in place. And then once that's all set, the, per the radiator will be completely fixed. Uh, and then from there, we'll attach the fittings to the radiator and run the lines, and we'll be all set with the coolant system. So just a quick update, you can see here, I'm starting to make these brackets to kind of upper mount the radiator. And I just made it by welding two pieces of 16 thickness steel together. Just kind of falls right in there. And then what I thought you guys would find interesting is these Clico. I use these a lot on my um, like sheet metal projects. It's basically a temporary fastener and you use this tool. And so I just drill a 1 8 hole for these ones, but they come in different sizes but it's a temporary fastener. And so you see here, I can kind of put it in the place I want it with a small hole, get it lined up the way I want. I'm gonna make a, now another piece, a vertical piece that connects these both and that'll be my clamp down. And then I'll do a nut cert where this hole is and I'll have kind of like the completed mount. So you see I did it on both sides. The next thing will just be to make this vertical piece and then we'll kind of finish it all up to make it look nice and paint it. And we'll be done with everything involved in mounting this radiator. All right, and here's the radiator in its final installation. I have the brackets painted black like the lower frame. Um, and we use our little rivet nuts um, to bolt it in here. So now we can finally go on to making our fittings, welding them onto the appropriate inlet and outlet, and running our lines. All right, so as you saw, we got one fitting welded on. It's a little hard to tell from the angle, but what we were trying to do here is just give it a little bit of a tilt inward this way so that we kind of get it ready to loop and go under like that. And we have the sway bar here, as tiny as it is. But we just kind of wanted to keep that in mind. So our loops kind of, that's why we kind of kept this inward facing, because if we kept it straight, it was going to go right above the sway bar. We wouldn't actually be able to avoid it. So we'll loop it send it under and then uh now the easier one will be the top and i haven't decided if i'm going to try to sneak it in like this through and under like that i think that might be my best bet and i should have room with the uh with the 16 line still to fit in here somewhere in this window if i use a 90. so i think that's how i'll get that one on so we'll try that next
So now you can see we have both fittings on and we're ready to run the lines. So what we'll do is we'll run them both under the chassis all the way to the motor and we'll add on the fittings there. Um, and then the last kind of thing we have for this video will just be to do an expansion tank in the front and the rear. We have one for the rear. I actually don't currently have one for the front. It's set up with a bleed valve, so I might just leave um, kind of like the factory Sirocco set up for now. Um, but we'll start with running the lines and figure that out when, we, when it comes time. So it's a little dark in here, but you can see we got the fittings mounted up with the hose ends and the lines. And now we'll run it under the car and to the front, or I should say to the motor in the rear, my bad. And uh, we'll kind of get the length there. I think I'm going to try to do the fittings on the car, the hose ends on the car to make it a little easier uh, to kind of finish it off. But we'll see. I, like I said, I might have to take it down because I don't know how easy it'll be to put the hose ends on without a vise. Um, just using like two wrenches. Alright, so you guys can kind of see where I'm at now. I got the two lines all the way up here. And what I used was actually these hanger, like these um, P-clamps, I guess you'd call them. Let me see what they have missing here as. Steel cable hose clamp, whatever. And then we use some self-drilling. I'm sure you guys are familiar with familiar with these if you do any automotive work and can kind of just give you an idea under here you can kind of see them i still need to figure out exactly how i want to tighten up the lines to get the exact length but kind of similar to my fuel lines we have them run under here and then you can see up at the front this is kind of how we look with the hose and the fittings here so we're getting very close i just kind of want to I might put one or two more hangers in to kind of get the lines exactly how I want it. And then we'll cut the hose to length and we will add the hose ends and we will be done with the main lines. Sorry, because it looks like some of our footage cut out. I actually just saw this as I was editing. But um, just so you can see, this is kind of how we ended up with the line, the hose ends, how it runs. We're going to run some heat wrap around this, but we don't have it on there right now. Um, we have the manifold back on. And you can see back here, is our return to the welded part of the manifold we fixed up. It goes down and runs under. See, we're in pretty good shape. So the next thing I wanna show you guys is, uh, well, basically how we get to here. So you can see, I made a bracket that bolts on here. And I made another one that bolts to here. And what we will do is we'll just create a vertical piece to attach them like this. You can see we'll have a vertical I'll weld it in there to connect the two brackets and that will be our amount for the water and this will be good because it'll be a nice clear line to fill it. It'll definitely be the highest point and I actually think this will all fit under the uh, the hood, the engine cover, uh, the rear apron. I actually don't know what you call it but what would be basically your hood on the back here. Um, so I'm going to tack this in get it on and then I'll just do one test fit with the cover to make sure we fit and assuming we do then we will weld this all together and we'll pretty much be done with the entire cooling system at that point. So you can see I made my little mount. I just have it uh, tacked together for now because I still got to make sure the hood clears but um, we basically used 1 8 inch flat stock and some more 3 quarter inch uh, round tube. Tack this together and I'll show you how it fits. So I'm actually pretty happy with this. It's pretty out there, but I actually think the way the hood fits that this is going to be fine. So we will look together for the first time to see how this works out.
So we are super close here. Um, but I think I'll probably, it's hard to tell if we're contacting just in this corner here or not. I could put something like grease on it and just see if it marks the, um, the engine lid. But either way, um, I mean, it's really close there, but it wouldn't be hard just to lower it just a little bit to be safe. So I think that's what I'll do. Probably just bring it down another inch or so to be safe. And I think we should be fine. So we shifted the mount over for by about an inch and now you can actually see space between the uh, reservoir and the engine cover. So I'll show you guys. So see, I just offset it a little bit rather than putting it right in the center. Now we should be good to go. So I'll paint this up, show you guys how it looks finished, and that's probably where we'll end the video for today. And so here you can see, this is a completed installation. We have it all painted, looking nice. Uh, there's the deck lid. Um, so really the only thing left here would be to run the hose from here to here. And then we actually need another fitting. The one that came for this, the threads were all mucked up, so I had to get a new one. But we run hose from here to right there. And then there's a line here that comes out of it, out of the turbo. And we'll bring it all the way around and to whatever size one of these fits. And the other one we'll use a freeze plug to block off. And that will be everything for the coolant system. Still need to decide exactly what we want to do with the front end as far as the uh, kind of burping bleeding situation. Um, but we'll save that for another day. So as always, thank you everyone for tuning in. I know this one was a pretty long video, but I hope you guys got a lot from it. I know it was really fun for me between, uh, you know, all the welding. I hadn't done any aluminum before, so this is really a wild experience from that regard. And it's a huge hurdle in the whole uh, aspect of getting this project going, because now that we have a cooling system, we can actually run the motor for an extended period of time, which means our next video will be our first drive in this car, or at least, you know, moving it around under its own power. So make sure you hit the like button if you like what you saw and you subscribe so you don't miss any of the coming content because we're gonna let it we're gonna be able to hear this bad girl purr real soon. And then once that's done and we have a little breathing room, we're gonna jump right onto this as our next project. Um and that should be pretty fun too. So with all that, hope to see you again soon.